All right, greetings everyone. Welcome to the third part of the video now. Uh, this will be the third and final part for section 1.1. Uh, continuing on with studying some of the basics of functions. Okay, so let's look uh, at another example involving functions as graphs. And here in this picture, we're given a function that we're calling f and we're asked to evaluate f of 1 and solve f of x equals 1. Now when we do this and we do each of these parts we as always want to think about where we're given an input or an output and does that mean we're trying to find an input or an output. So for the first part when we have f of 1 well, notice they've given us the part on the inside, inside the parentheses. So that means they've given us the input and they want us to find the output. So what we'll do is go along our horizontal axis. So this one here, go to where there's one, and then we look for the corresponding output there. So we go up to the graph and it looks like the output there is three. So F of one equals three. All right, for the second part, we're given that f of x equals 1. So now notice on the inside, that's where the variable is, where x is, and we know the thing on the outside, so we know the output. So we need to find what the input is. So this time, we we'll want to look at our vertical axis, since we were given an output, so we'll look at this one. Go to where 1 is. So that's right here. And look at where the possible inputs are there, where that intersects the graph. And it looks like, first of all, that when x equals 0, right where I circled, the output is 1, f of x, or f of 0 equals 1. So we see that there. But notice that's not the only place where an input gives us an output of 1. So notice that we also have that right here. So an input of negative two also gives us an output of one. And right here as well, a input of negative four also gives us an output of one. So it looks like in this case, there were actually three possible inputs that could give us that same output. Now, does that mean this function is a one-to-one -one function? Right, the answer is no there, right? Because we see that multiple inputs are related with the same output. All right. Um, so our final representation of functions uh, would be functions as formulas or formulas as functions. So here, we're given this function g of k equals 3k cubed plus 1. And notice here our inputs, well, those are going to be the k's. So values for k will be our input. Okay, and then we out get outputs by using this formula. And in this case, since they didn't give us specifically an output variable, we know that our g's then are our outputs. So that's also the name of the function, but it's also the outputs. Okay, we're asked to find g of negative 2 and solve g of k equals 25. So notice on this first part, okay, they've given us the input, the thing on the inside. So we need to find the output. So how do we do that? Well, they've given us a value for k. That negative 2 is in the place of k. So we can just plug that into the formula here. So we can do g of negative 2 equals 3 times negative 2 cubed plus 1. And then uh, follow our order of operations. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8. So we'd have 3 times negative 8 plus 1. 3 times negative 8 is negative 24. Plus 1 would be negative 23. Okay, so here we would have g of negative 2 equals negative 23. All right. And there's that. 
Okay, I'm going to clear this out. And let's look at the second part now. We're given that g of k equals 25, and we're told to solve this. So notice now they've given us the output. They want us to find the input, okay? And I also want to reiterate, remember there's a difference between g of k and just k. Okay, in this problem, we are looking for the value of k, because that's our input. G of k itself represents an output, right? Those two things together. So g of k is the same as 25. That's the output value there. All right. So how can we do this? Well, we have this formula that says g of k equals 3k cubed plus 1. And we know we're trying to find a value for k. We don't know the input. But we do know the output, right? In fact, we know something that can go in the place of this g of k. So we can actually put that 25 in there. So we end up with 25 equals 3k cubed plus 1. Solve for k here. So we'll subtract 1 from both sides. So then we'll have 3k cubed equals 24. 24 equals that. Uh, divide by 3 on both sides. So we'd have k cubed equals 8. And then you may or may not remember, but when we have something cubed like this, and we need to undo it to solve for k, we can do a root that is the opposite. So we can do the cubed root of 8 on both sides of the equation. And doing that will give us k equals 2. And you can double check that in your calculators. Or just think about 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So that's how we know that k equals 2 there. OK, so that would be the solution for this second part. All right, a couple of final things from this um, section. So first of all, the distance formula, and usually I would go over where the distance formula comes from, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to write it down. And so the distance formula allows us, if we're given two points in coordinate space, or two coordinates, we can find the distance between them in whatever units we're measuring things in. So our distance formula is d equals square root of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared. OK, so that's our distance formula. And if we're going to use this, so for example, here we're asked to find the distance between these two points. Well, our x2s, x1s, y2s, and y1s, those all come from our coordinate points. OK? And it turns out that when we have two points like we have down here, it doesn't matter what we choose as x2 or x1 or y2 or y1. What does matter is this. If I choose this value of negative 3 here to be x2, because that's in where the traditional x values are. What's important is that this 4 here has to be y2. Okay, it cannot be y1. You can't have x2 and y1 together. Now, if I made negative <coughs> uh, 3x1, that's fine. But if I do that, then the 4 has to be y1. Okay, so that's these have to be paired this way. All right. Um, in a similar, I'll call these two here, x2 and y2. So we can put this information in the distance formula up there. And I'm going to, let's see, I'll do that here, I guess. So we would get, this is equal to square root x2, which is 2, minus x1, which is negative 3. Notice I put the negative 3 in parentheses, as we talked about before plus the y2 would be negative 1 minus y1, which is 4 squared. And then we can start to simplify this. And I apologize. I'm going to erase this. All 
Okay, so then we'll get square root of, here in the first set of parentheses, we have a two minus a negative three, that'll make a plus. Two plus three gives us five squared plus. Here we have negative one minus four, which would be negative five squared. And notice that's inside parentheses, so I'll write it like that. We know that five squared and negative five squared are both 25, so the square root of 25 plus 25, this would be the square root of 50, which then we can use what we learned about simplifying roots to simplify this further. So make this square root of 25 times the square root of two. So just become five root two as our distance. Um, and then we also have to make sure we put units on this because it's distance. Now we weren't given any units here. So we'll just use the label units to represent that. Okay. And sometimes when you have something like five root two, that's kind of hard to envision in your head. So you could plug that in your calculator. And when I do that for me, I get 7.071 is the uh, distance between those two points. Okay. All right. Uh, one last thing from this section, uh, writing equations of circles. Now, um, this is actually related to the distance formula, which is why these two things are done together. And again, I'm not going to go through all the specifics of that. What I will show you, though, is the general formula for the equation of a circle. So first of all, actually before that, we look at the graph of a circle. Is that a function? Hopefully you're saying no, right? Because it does not pass the vertical line test, right? I can draw multiple vertical lines here that'll intersect this circle in multiple places. So it's not a function. However, uh, circles come up in lots of applications and some of the problems we'll do this quarter. So it is useful for us to be able to write equations of them. So general equation of a circle is given by x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Whereas you can hopefully see from the picture, the values for h and k, those come from the center of the circle, the coordinates of the center of the circle. And then r is the length of the radius in the circle. Also, when we write the equation of a circle, okay, we usually want to leave x and y as variables. Okay, when you have an equation or a function describing something, you usually leave variables in it, and usually they're your inputs and outputs and variables. And then you afterwards, when you use that equation or that formula to solve for things, then you might plug in values for your variables. Okay. So down here we're given, or we're asked to find the equation of a circle centered at negative three, five with radius five. So to do this, we just want to identify what these different things, numbers down here stand for. So notice the center of the circle is negative three comma five. We're told here that the coordinates for the center of the circle are h comma k. So this will be our h and our k. And the radius is five. So that's going to be the value for r. So we'll go ahead and plug that into the equation up above. So we'll do x, remember that's going to stay as x, minus negative 3 quantity squared. And notice I put that negative 3 in parentheses. Plus, I do y minus the value for k, which is 5 squared, equals the radius, which is 5 squared. And we're pretty much done here. There's just a couple of things we could simplify. Notice that we have the minus minus here, so that can make a plus. We also know five squared is 25. So the equation in the circle here would be x plus three squared plus y minus five squared equals 25. And that would be the equation of our circle. All right. Great, that's all for now. Thank you for watching.